Everybody ready? Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Captain Joseph Darris, and I'm just going to kind of go over uh, the agenda here for this morning. Uh, how this will work is first I'm going to introduce to you, introduce to you uh, Deputy District Attorney Adam Flores. He's going to come here and speak to you in just a moment, very briefly, about the Family Assistance Center, provide you with some information, and then he'll be available for you following this press conference uh, to answer any specific questions you might have. So he'll be here in just a moment. Following that, we're going to start off uh, with Chief Scott Smithy at the Gilroy Police Department. Uh, again, for those of you who have, who have not been here previously, his name is spelled S-C-O-T. There's only one T in Scott. And S-M-I-T-H-E-E. -E. Following his comments, uh, the, the uh, special agent in charge of the, San, of the FBI's San Francisco Field Division Office will speak to you and uh, provide you with some information as well. Uh, they will take some limited questions, and I'd ask that as we go through that process, we're respectful and we'll d please direct your uh, question to the particular individual you want to speak to, and then we'll kind of go from there without having everybody shout and just start yelling questions out. That would probably be best. Can you remind us who the FBI speaker is? Sure. Uh, John Bennett. John Bennett, Special Agent in Charge, FBI San Francisco Field Division. So with that, I'll introduce to you uh, Adam Flores from the District Attorney's Office. Good morning, everyone. My name is Adam Flores. I'm a Deputy District Attorney with the Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office. The District Attorney's Office is taking the lead in having the Family Assistance Center available for all victims of the Gilroy Garlic Festival shooting. We are working with our partners with the, federal, the FBI um, Victim Services Division, Santa Clara County Behavioral Health Services, Red Cross, the City of Gilroy, and also the Santa Clara County Library, just to name a few. We have services available for all the victims, whether you saw the shooter or did not, whether you were on scene, or whether you had a very close loved one that was on scene. We have mental health services available for you. We have victim advocates that can help you through this very difficult time. We also have um, victim advocates that would be help would help out vendors that perhaps are in a situation where they have lost wages. We have help for you, and we are going to be open today, Tuesday through Friday, from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. We're going to be here in Gilroy uh, at the Wheeler Community Center and the Gilroy Library. Uh, victims who also left behind personal property, victims who left behind uh, their vehicles, they can come here to the Family Assistance Center to be reunited with their personal property and also with their vehicles. So again, uh, we welcome all victims uh, in this time when they need help, and we are going to continue to be here as long as that's needed. So for, again, recap, Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. Okay, so again, we'll start off with our Gilroy Police Chief, Scott Smithy. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm getting more information that's coming forth on this case that uh, we're able to release. I, you know, we want to be as transparent as we can with that information, but of course, it's an active investigation, so I have to be careful what I release and when I release it, uh, but I have quite a quite a bit of additional information, uh, more details that I can release to you today. Um, one of the questions we've gotten from a number of uh, sources is how many rounds were fired, and we've been able to determine that. Uh, the suspect fired approximately 39 rounds during the course of this event, and the Gilroy police officers, there was three officers that fired, and between the three of them, they fired a total of 18 rounds. Uh, the suspect was hit by the police officer's gunfire multiple times. 
I, I do not yet have a definitive finding from the coroner's office on exactly where those rounds hit him or exactly how many rounds, only to say that, they, that he was hit multiple times at this point. The other thing that was important to us was whether or not any of the uh, people that were killed in this event were struck by friendly fire or by police officers' rounds. And we've, we've been able to determine that none of the people that died in this incident were struck by friendly fire. They were all killed uh, by the suspect. I'd also been asked about the suspect, whether he was wearing any kind of body armor or a bullet-resistant uh, vest. Uh, and that is confirmed that he was wearing a bullet-resistant type vest at the time of the incident. Some of the information regarding uh, his armament, the weapons, uh, you know, how prepared was he, we know now that he had a 75-round drum magazine that would fit into this weapon. Uh, we recovered that, and it had 71 rounds left in the drum. He had two 40-round magazines uh, on his body for the weapon. He had two 40-round magazines that were on the ground, and he had one 40-round magazine that they described to me as being loose on or near him, and I'm not exactly sure the location of that one. I told you the other day that there was a shotgun located in the vehicle, uh, which has been confirmed. It was a Remington 870 shotgun that was located in the vehicle. The other item that generated a lot of interest was the bag or the backpack or, or something that was found in the creek. Uh, we now know uh, what was in that bag, and I'll, I'll go ahead and give you that information as well. There was just uh, two loose rounds for the rifle that he had that were in the bottom of the bag. He had a scope, a rifle scope of some sort in the bag, a flashlight and a shovel, and two additional loaded 40-round magazines for the gun. And then he had four loose buckshot rounds, which would have been for the shotgun. And that was the only contents that were in the bag. And so that's, uh, that's my additional detailed information that I was going to give today. I, I'm going to turn it over to the FBI because I think they've got uh, much more information about uh, the status of their investigation and what's going on out at the park. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is John Bennett, and I'm the special agent in charge of FBI San Francisco. Um, before I provide an update, I want to say something to the families of Stephen uh, Kayla and Trevor, I know nothing we can say or do will ever bring back your loved ones, but I want you to know that everything that law enforcement is doing from our methodical examination of our evidence to our outreach to all the victims and their families to our ongoing investigation, everything is being done with you in our minds. And we are very sorry for your loss. The FBI evidence response team has concluded our collection um, at Christmas Hill Park. We have now turned the park back over to the city. I appreciate the public's patience while we process the scene carefully, slowly, and methodically. The crime scene was expansive. We brought in significant FBI resources from around the country uh, to do this as thoroughly and as quickly as we can. Our victim specialists continue to work with our local partners to support all of you who have been directly affected by this crime through the Family Assistance Center, and I want to thank them all for their tireless efforts. Our collection and review of the digital media in this case is ongoing. We are continuing to access data on several devices. We have not made a final investigative conclusion into the motive of the shooter. However, we have uncovered evidence throughout the course of our investigation that the shooter was exploring violent ideologies. We have seen a fractured ideology. The shooter appeared to have an interest in varying, competing violent ideologies. As we continue to exploit his digital media, we are striving to find several things. What, if any, ideology he had actually settled on? Who? if anyone he may have been in contact with regarding these ideologies. Who, if anyone, helped him or had advanced knowledge of his intentions and why he committed this specific 
act of violence. Much of our work remains ongoing. One piece of evidence does not necessarily constitute a motive, hence the need for a thorough, methodical investigation. The FBI and the Gilroy Police Department investigators have uncovered a list of organizations on the subject's digital media that may have been potential targets of violence. These organizations from across the country include religious institutions, federal buildings, courthouses, political organizations from both major political parties and the Gilroy Garlic Festival. Even though the threat appears to have been mitigated by the subject's death, the FBI has a responsibility to notify individuals and organizations of potential threats or acts of violence. We are in the process of notifying those groups. However, we will not be releasing or confirming the names of any specific organizations at this time out of respect for their privacy and their safety. Due to the discovery of the target list, as well as other information we have encountered in this investigation, the FBI has opened a full domestic terrorism investigation into this mass shooting. I understand that several people uh, have questions as to why we did not open this investigation sooner. And I want to provide some additional information on how this process works. An act of violence alone, even a large scale and horrifying as it may seem, does not necessarily give us the legal authority to open a federal terrorism investigation. A federal domestic terrorism case requires several things. It requires the existence of a potential federal violation. It requires the unlawful use of force or violence or the threat of force or violence. And most importantly, the existence of ideological motivation. Having a belief system, also committing having a belief system and also committing an act of violence does not necessarily make that a terrorist, an act of terrorism, nor does it give a clear motive. We have to determine that individual's ideology caused them to commit the act of violence in furtherance of their political and social goals. We are still working to determine the motive for this crime. However, due to the information we have found thus far, the FBI has opened this full domestic terrorism investigation. It is critically important for us to ensure there is no ongoing threat to any community. This case is ongoing, so we cannot provide detailed information into our investigative activities at this time. It is absolutely important that we do this the right way. Finally, I want to thank the public for your patience as we continue to conduct this investigation carefully and methodically and appropriately under our legal authorities. Thank you to all the organizations that have stepped up to help this community as the grieving continues and the healing process now begins. Gilroy Strong is not just a t-shirt. It is who you are. This community has been incredible. We have been embedded here for several days now. And we've seen firsthand how all of you have come together to support one another and the police departments. And I want to thank you all. At this point, I'm willing to take some questions. Can you please go through the, uh, the target list again? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Can you please run, run through what organizations were targeted? And can you be a little bit more specific as you can in terms of how those were uncovered? Was there uh, you know, a, a list that, you know, a basic uh, target list, or, or did, did you piece it all together? Um, they're through the digital media examinations and, and analysis. Uh, we, we find what we believe are, are targets of interest of this individual. And as I said, they are religious, they are government, um, they are political parties, both, um, both sides of the House. So there's, there, again, it's a fractured interest in, in targets. Um, there was nothing that was all, um, all one side or the other. And if I could follow up, was there like a, uh, uh, did you get to the point where there was like a specific courthouse, a specific church, uh, things of that nature? Yes, ma'am. Were there any specific individual name in the target list or what you discovered? No, no specific names. Let's see a white nationalist with, with ideology. With media investigation, are you seeing, have you uncovered any link or can you officially rule out any link between the incidents that occurred over the weekend? Uh, I'm not prepared to talk about those other ones, um, so I, I just don't have that information. Have you any ideologies that you mentioned? Is white nationalism part of that? We are we're still exploring those um, right now, so we're not ready to make that, that determination yet. Yeah. 
uh, cannot rule it out. During the investigation last week, have you heard any evidence that he had any support from anyone, logistics or any encouragement? No. Have you been talking with his family? Have you been able to get in touch with his brother at all during this investigation? We have been in contact with the family. Are you rolling up the Instagram account? Have you been able to rule that out? We are still um, exploring that. Um, that piece of the, of the investigation. It's an ongoing investigation, so I can't speak to that right now, sir. Just to follow up, was there a manifesto left behind? Do we have any indication of that? There is no manifesto. I know you say you can't go into specifics of the targets, but you mentioned both political parties. How about in terms of religions? Were there multiple religions, or was it one religious ideology? Um, I don't have that information in front of me right now. I know there were religious um, affiliated uh, groups. Was there any reason to believe that he was inspired by other mass shootings in the past? No. Are you at least able to narrow it down, these institutions? Are these all based here in the Santa Clara County area, or are they more throughout the state? Or even They're like nationwide. Is there a timeline for any of these targets to be hit besides the Gilroy Dharma Festival, which has specific dates? There's no timeline. Is there any indication that he targeted something, a smaller group, or vandalized something prior to this incident? No. Do you know where his weapons came from? I believe the um, chief said that they've been purchased legally um, in Nevada. All of them? All of them. Yeah, shotgun and the... the rounds and um, I'm not sure of the ammunition yet. Don't we don't know that yet. Is his family being helpful? Um, well, we can't talk about, you know, who we're, we're talking with right now, but we, we have um, had multiple um, uh, interviews with, with many people in the area. Are they surprised? I, I don't have that information. Can you tell us what's next? So you're releasing Christmas Hill Park. Does that mean the community can go back in there? And also, what are the next steps for the FBI? How many agents are going to remain in this area? Sure. We're, we're committed here until the job is done. Um, we are going to release that back, and we have turned it over. Our evidence collection, as I said, is complete. However, we are still working uh, with victim services to get the vendors um, to um, get the rest of their uh, belongings out of the park. Uh, we anticipate that uh, to take another day. Um, but when there's no more evidence collection. Our evidence response teams have, have now pivoted um, and have been, uh, have been reassigned to, to other investigative priorities in the United States. And how much is the likelihood that we will come up with no more evidence? Yeah, that, that is always a possibility. Um, you know, this is in some cases that a, um, an individual, may, we may never see that um, or may, you know, never be able to determine um, if there was an ideology or not. So that is a real possibility. Sir. To clarify, where was his place of residence when he purchased the shop? I don't have that information. So we'll, we'll have to we'll have figure that out. Is there any evidence that he was um, inspired by any specific people or organizations? Um, the, the investigation is ongoing right now, and I'm going to hold that right now. Is there any event in his life history that turned him to these ideologies, anything you've discovered? We haven't seen anything like that yet. Out of the list of locations that he physically visited, any of them? I'm sorry, say that again? Out of the list of locations that he physically visited, any of them? We're following up on that right now. We've, we've learned a lot uh, in a very short time about the uh, suspects in Dayton and El Paso. Why is that not the case in those um, Right now, I'm not, I'm not prepared to talk about those yeah. um, on there. This is our, you know, the FBI provided police assistance, uh, technical assistance to the um, to the. Uh, Gilroy Police Department, as I said before, you need several things in order for this to become a, a federal investigation, and that includes not just an ideology, but the threat of violence, and there has to be an underlying federal um, crime as well. Right. Now, now, because the suspect is deceased, uh, and you open a federal investigation, um, what transpires? What do you do you know, with this uh, domestic terrorism? Sure. This now becomes part of the uh, FBI San Francisco's uh, portfolio. Uh, we, we assign it to a, a particular squad and group of individuals, uh, and they now have the legal authorities to send out subpoenas and, and search warrants. Um, under the police assistance one, we were uh, unable to do that uh, until we have a full predicated FBI investigation open. Now that that is open, uh, we can start cutting the leads to across the country to, to further investigate this, and, and Gilroy can get back to uh, being the great department that they are. If you're looking for other suspects, uh, other uh, associates you may have had. We, we are looking for wherever the evidence takes us. Well, the, can you expand on the motive? So you say the ideologies. Can you explore as to looking into the motive? At the same time saying he's exploring violent ideologies, can you expand on that? 
Um, no. Sorry. Was the firearm, ammunition, or magazine illegal to own? Uh, under California, I'm, I'm federal, so under California law, I couldn't tell you that. I think I'm going to end there. Um, Scott, I have one None of the uh, fatal uh, victims were struck by uh, friendly fire or any. Was anyone wounded potentially by friendly fire? Not that we know of. I, I, again, there's so many people and so much evidence that I, I can't say definitively until the coroner's office and, and other investigative elements tell us what they uncover. But at this point, there's no indication that anyone was struck with friendly fire. And how many times did your officers strike him with gunfire? I, I, I don't have that definitive answer yet. Again, that comes out of the coroner's office, and they will release that report when they're ready, and they, they're not ready to do that yet. Chief, just curious what you make of the FBI's announcement in terms of the target list. Well, I think, you know, I can't say enough about the FBI and the cooperation and the resources that they've dedicated to the city of Gilroy. Uh, this is a very large event, certainly beyond the capabilities of our department to handle on their own. I, and I think as the leads take us in this direction, to have their involvement is is a very positive thing. Chief, do you have I, any comments as far as the shootings after the Gilroy Bravo Festival shooting in both El Paso and in Ohio? Well, having lived through this, I can only know what they're going through. And, um, you know, it's very sad that we have people that do these kinds of things. I want to, I wanna, before I close, one, one additional thing. The, F, the FBI is done with the park and the processing, but just uh, for our local folks, for our community, that people that may want to go visit that location, that does not mean that the park is open to the public because we still have a lot of, you know, a lot of people have to recover their personal belongings and whatnot, so we're, we're maintaining a presence out there. We're keeping that park closed until all the vendors and all the people that have personal property in there can get in and remove their stuff. Um, and once all that process is done, then we'll open the park back up, to, you know, to where people would go down inside there. But just because the FBI is finished does not mean that that, that park is open to the public yet. Is there an estimation on when it will I would imagine it would be relatively soon. Um, a lot of that depends on how fast we can get a hold of people and how fast they can get in, but we're hoping within the next day or two. Okay, One last thank question, you. anybody? One last question. And thank you all.